Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining. It looks like there's a lot of noise. Um, Harifa, would you have an earpiece that we can use? Um, there's no noise, it's quiet. Okay. Okay. Maybe it's coming from me, but good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining. You're welcome to the Civilized Presence. Good afternoon. Um, just give us two minutes for Facebook to get this video visible. Do you have another another device that's on? That's the problem. There's a little bit of a feedback. Can you check it? Um, um, I don't. Hold on a second. Okay. Welcome everyone. We're ready to get started with this session. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you for being here. Um, okay, you're welcome to Civilized Presence. Perfect. So Harif, I think you have some security on your page so you have to post the video, please. Welcome, Ella. It's great to have you in the house. And um, can you please post the video? Take it from my personal page, Harifa, and put it on your page. Okay. Yes. Yeah, because it looks like you have some kind of security, okay. and I'm not able to share on your page. I did. I did, I did share. Them. Okay. Great. So, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. I know people are used to seeing me in the morning. Welcome, Ella. It's great to have you in the house. Thank you so much. Thank you. I can see the shares already. Thank you for being here. We are going to have a great time this afternoon. Um, but there's a little bit of a feedback. I'm just wondering, is your phone, is the video on on your phone, please? Absolutely not, because I even have headphones. So there's no way that you can have okay. Okay, I'm not quite sure, but please bear with us. It's going to be okay in a couple of minutes. I'm not sure what's going on, but this just kind of shows us it's going to be a great session. So welcome. Now, for some of you who are joined us this morning, welcome back. If you are just joining for the very first time, I'm excited to have you here. It's the session number 92 of the Civilized Presence. And today is a special day. Uh, so happy International Women's Day. Uh, women from all over the world are being celebrated. And um, if you can hear me, let me know. Just give me a thumbs up. Let me know if you can hear me. If you think there's noise on my end, let me know. Um, because this video is for you and I want you to be able to enjoy this session. Now, a lot of you are joining us for the very first time. So Civilized Presence is really an online TV session where lives are changed, where people discover their self, their purpose, their voice, and learn social skills to thrive in the real world. So if you want to become a change maker, you are in the right place. So welcome. Usually we're here every Mondays and Fridays at 8 a.m. Eastern Time. Sometimes we have special sessions on Saturdays, but today we kind of messed it up with the time difference uh, because our guest is here all the way from Ireland. And so we had to make a change uh, with our timing. So I know it's going to take a minute for our audience to be here, but welcome and thank you so much for the hat. Thank you for the thumbs up. And Ella, please let us know. Can you hear me clearly? Uh, is there a feedback on my end, Ella? Please let me know what is going on. If you think there is noise, let me know. Uh, welcome, welcome, Esther from Nigeria. Welcome. I can see some other people jumping on. But if you're not on my page directly, I might not see your name. So welcome. It is great to have you here. Welcome, everyone. I'm so excited. Yes, Ella, please let us know. Can you hear me? Um, is there a feedback? Please comment in the box below. So as you come in, let us know where you're joining us from and say something great to us. It's the Women's Day. So we have to be able to share some love, some hearts and smiles. Give us some thumbs up. Give us some hearts. The heart simply means, Louisa, we love what you're doing. And the love is for Harry. First, Harry, for welcome. We're excited to have you here in the house. Now, I'm not sure where the feedback it's coming from, but I know it's going to work out pretty fine. So my name is Louisa Akaizo, and I am your host 
for today. So Ella says, yes, I can hear, invest in yourself. Uh, slight noise from your end, but we can manage. Okay, okay, it, it's gonna be great. I'm not sure what's going on, but it's gonna be fantastic. Um, I'm using a cutlass um, head. So sometimes the cutlass could pick up some noise that are unwanted, but it, it's gonna be cleared up shortly. But thank you for letting us know that. So my name is Luis Kakaizo and I'm your host for today. Guys, I feel so honored that you responded to the call, to the posts, to the flyer, whether it's on Facebook, on Instagram, wherever that you're joining us from. Are you, did you just stumble on the video? Maybe someone posted it on your page or someone invited you. For those of you who are already here, um, hello, Natalie. Please invite your friends, families, neighbors, and your enemies too. Bring them in the house. Welcome, Natalie from Qatar. It's great to have you in the house. Yes, so back to me. I'm a certified master civility trainer and a leadership coach and speaker with the John Maxwell team. And I work confidently with leaders and professionals that place great importance in themselves and their reputation. And of course, that's gonna be you this afternoon because you made out time to be here. So welcome. If you're watching us on replay, you can forward the first five minutes because of the introduction, but it's very important that we do what we do. And, um, but you can just hang on and not forward it for the next five minutes and um, enjoy the session with us. So the main goal of the series and session on Facebook and Instagram and on YouTube is really to help restore civility in our society. And really what we've been doing is I've been working with different experts, professionals, leaders from all over the world and, and really having meaningful conversations on how we can break the concept of civility into tiny bits for you to be able to understand. And I'm just going to show you how easy but important it is for you to be civil. And it can begin with little things like saying please and thank you, or good afternoon, or even share a compliment just like I'm going to do right now. Harry, you look amazing. And thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, welcome. So um, if you're still struggling with the definition of civility, I'm going to share one with you. But you can um, think about the golden rule, treating others the way that you want to be treated. So I'm going to share one that's from Dr. Forney. And Dr. Forney, I refer to him as the grandfather of civility. And that states that being civil means being constantly aware of others and weaving restraint, respect, and consideration into that very fabric of awareness. So civility is a form of gracious goodness. Civility is being responsible for your actions. Apologize earnestly if you have to, and be responsible for continuously easing the experience of the person next to you. And now if you're saying to me, Louisa, um, this is pretty long. Okay, I wanted to take one thing away from the session. Civility is focused on positive people's treatment. So welcome, Natalie. It's great to have you in the house. Welcome, Angie. It's great to have you in the house. Yes, great. Everyone is so excited to have Harifa here. Um, Harifa is all the way from Ireland, and she is so special to me, and you're going to find out in a moment why she's so special to me. So having said that, um, just kind of make yourself comfortable. Grab your um, bottle of water and get a pen and paper. It's time for us to learn. Every time that we have Harifa in the house, it is time to learn. And welcome, Morel, my friend from London, UK. It's great to have you here. I feel so honored that you made our time to be here. So some of you might have seen the post. Some might have seen the flyer. Or maybe you haven't, um, but you know today is a special day, really. In our story, it's so important. If you saw the title of today, uh, it is from pain to power, and uh, we have to be able to use our pain and turn it into power. And Harifa, can you still hear me? Hello, Harifa. I'm just wondering if we lost you there. Can you hear me, Harifa? It looks like she froze for a minute. Hello, hello. Um, so I, I'm gonna bring her back online. It looks like her network is acting up, 
but we're just going to continue. She's all the way from Ireland, so these things can happen. So, Harifa, we're just waiting to get you back online. So let me tell you a bit about our guests uh, just before she gets back on. Our guest for this session is Harifa Darley. And Harifa is a lady who went from a tomato seller to a motivational speaker and TV host. Yes. So Harifa, can you join us back again? Um, I can see that you're on, but I cannot see your photo. So you might have to step out and uh, reconnect back in. Uh, we're just waiting to get her back on track. She's just coming. Okay, she's right here again. She's right here again. Perfect. Welcome. I am sorry. I didn't know what the network is doing, but we're just going to have fun with it. <laughs> yes. Welcome. Yeah, we're excited. So let me tell you a bit about Harifa, um, who is our guest for today. Now, let me read a bit about her bio. So growing up in the little village called uh, Nalingula, if I don't get it right, Forgive me, Harifa. And that's in Malawi, southeastern Africa, in the middle of nowhere and in a place without electricity, uh, television, just streams and farms. Harifa Darley started life with a humble background. She woke up to the footsteps of a market woman, which became her morning motivation. And listening to the first sweet melody of hands in the morning reminded Harifa to wake up with inspiration to do something in life. So Harifa Darley is popularly known as Miss D, one of the first black ladies in Ireland to contest into the um, pageant in the year 2000, a quintessential uh, polymath and author of Life Menu, the book that has motivated lives. She is a three times uh, international award winner, a mentor, an idea developer, the CEO, founder, and host of Miss D TV Ireland. Um, her foundation is involved in a lot of charity and community work, and has used have she's used her platform to synthesize and empower people living with diabetes. And so, of course, as women, we all know that from time to time, we need to get ourselves inspired and strengthened to be able to create a great future. And this is why we have Harifa here today on such a remarkable day as the International Women's Day uh, to be able to encourage all of us. And so um, I have a comment from Ella. She says, Louisa, we lost you for a minute. You're going in and out. How is it right now? Is it working now? Um, give me some thumbs up, guys, if you can hear me. Give me some thumbs up. Um, check my mic. Okay. I'm going to do that. Anything for you. Okay. How is it working? Hello? Can you hear me now? Okay, great. So I can, I'm getting all the thumbs up, so it looks like you can hear me perfectly. It looks like it's working out fine now. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Ella. Thank you, Morel, uh, for being here. Thank you. Thank you. I have all these wonderful ladies who watch my back. It, it feels so great to work with all of you. Thank you so much. Welcome, Angie. It's great to have you here. Claire, yes. Thank you. Perfect. So we're just going to paddle along. So um, Harry, let me give you a minute to say hello to the audience. Over to you, Harifa. Um, hi there, my name is Harifa Day. Thank you very, very much for having me here. Here it's uh, around nine o'clock p.m. in Arabia. I'm so honored to be here. This is an honor actually. And uh, yeah, today is International Women's Day and happy Women's Day everywhere. And yeah, I'm excited. Woo! Thank you for having me. Thank you, Harry Fry. It's such an honor to be able to serve with you on this remarkable day, the International Women's Day. Um, thank you. I can see all the hats and I can see all the love from everyone. Thank you so much. So how this works really, Harry Fry, is to get started with the questions and begin the conversation. And of course, if we have questions from the audience, uh, we will just carry on. Yes. Welcome, Harifa. Everyone is excited to see you. 
So my very first question for you, Harifa, would be, what does civility mean to you? Over to you, Harifa. Thank you very much. Um, love, kindness, and respect of one another. Because it's very important for people to actually respect each other and it makes the world go around, you know? So to me, is respect of one another, despite the uh, the race where the person is coming from, the gender and all that, it's just respect. And respect comes with love, patience and kindness. Thank you, thank you. We've been sharing this. Uh, for some of you who have been hanging out with us, uh, you will agree with me that this is what we talk about all the time, respect and love, uh, sprinkling kindness, Absolutely. Sharing love with one another, not because you're going to get anything back, but because they deserve it. Uh, sharing love because you chose love. Sharing love because they are human. Absolutely. And so what a better day for us to share this message about um, love and kindness and giving and civility and golden rule on a day that we're celebrating women. Because I think that if women all over the world can embrace the concept of civility, trust me, the world's gonna be a better place. <laughs> then we, we will be a strong force if we embrace the concept of civility, we can be able to work together as one. Um, so thank you so much, Harifa, and thank you, Morel. Uh, there's a comment from Morel, love, kindness, and respect for one another. Yes, there you go. So Harifa, that kind of leads me to the next question. So of course, we know Harifa Daly as the motivational speaker, as the TV host, but can you tell us a bit about your story? Um, going from a tomato seller to a motivational speaker and a TV host. Can you share about yourself over to you, Harifa? Uh, thank you very much. I love when they say tomato seller, that, that makes me laugh all the time. Um, well, um, I'm a very humble person. I'm a mother of two full of love. Um, I was born in Malawi, in a very little village, very nice, quiet, peaceful, although it's in the middle of nowhere, but very peaceful. And I grew up there. By the age of uh, 16, I went to South Africa. And from there, something happened. I met a guy and things didn't work out. I ended up in the street. What to do? I started selling tomatoes and I had a daughter then. She was only a week old and yeah, my life started then. And after that, I raised some money and I came to Europe and started my life and there, here I am. <laughs> wow, that, that is powerful. Uh, you are such an inspiration for a lot of women, uh, just to show how much you'd use the pain and the progress, uh, really turning that into your power to be able to inspire a lot of people today. Now, there's so much work that your foundation does. There's so much work that your initiative does. Can you share a bit about uh, some of the charity and community work that you're doing? I know that you are doing some work in Nigeria with uh, people living with disabilities. Can you share a bit about that? Over to you, Harifa. Uh -huh. I, I just uh, volunteer with different organizations in Ireland. Uh, first, I work with the um, Sickle Cell Island, which is, you know, the CEO, the founder, Esther. I volunteer with them. And also, I work with AC Matilda with Sunri uh, Sunrise Foundation, where they go to different countries to raise awareness. So I work with her as well, just to volunteer and contribute whatever it is I can to, to the community. And also, um, I, uh, what's this organization again? There are, there are few, there are lots of them. And uh, to my own, I am working on a project called LIMO. LIMO, it's called Life Menu Movement, where we're going to raise awareness to, to, to help other women that uh, they have been going through difficult times that to speak out, to break the silence and speak up. Because a lot of people are going through 
uh, some difficulties. They have so much to talk about, but they can't because a lot of them, they said, oh, if I say people will judge me or if I express how I feel, people, they are going to judge me or they're going to say I'm weak. Or some of them that have been abused when they were young, they still carry the stigma with them. They can talk about it. They're finding it very difficult in marriages. They're finding it very difficult to move forward because of the stigma. So my what I'm trying to do is just to raise the awarenesses, break the silence and speak up. Because when you say something, it's when you let yourself and when you get the freedom to continue living life. Because I was a victim myself. I went through a lot. I don't say troubles. I don't say struggles. I always say I went through life training in my life. But what I did is I changed every single thing that I went through to motivate myself. Because sometimes I sit down and look back where I'm coming from. I always pat myself on my back and say, girl, you have done well. Because my life wasn't easy. Not because that I'm not coming from a good home, but sometimes when we choose to live a different life, when we choose to, to follow our goals or whatever it is that we desire, we kind of take ourselves and say, you know what, I'm going to stand, I'm going to do this. So I, I took a lonely journey that I went through a lot. To be here, I am the testimony. I am my own testimony and God has helped me so much in a way that every single day I wake up, I look at myself on the mirror, I say, girl, you are blessed. So what I'm trying to do, as I said, is just to help people to speak up. Tell mm -hmm. your story. Your story might be somebody's uh, freedom. You may, mm -hmm. you may help someone. You may set someone free because every single person has something that is going on, but because you think, oh, my life is over because you don't know what the other person is going through unless you hear someone's story. So yes, that's what I'm about to do to help people to speak up because I was a victim and look at me now. I talk about it, I'm free and living life. Yes. Wow. Thank you so much. And welcome, Dr. Orna. It's great to have you in the house. Welcome, Martha. Uh, welcome, Vince Morell. It's great to have you in the house. I'm just going to encourage you, ladies. Could you just um, share this on your page? Invite more people. Uh, Phil Vanova, it's great to have you. Fazal, it's great to have you here. Thank you so much. It's the International Women's Day. And we are talking about turning your pain to power. That's what we're talking about. Every woman, everyone has got a story. What is important is to be able to use that story as a power and as a tool to impact other people's lives. This morning we learned that we had a we have a voice. Every woman has a voice. What are you doing with your voice? What are you doing with your story? So if you have a voice and you have a story, it's high time that we get up and be able to use our voice to tell that story. I welcome Susan Jacobs. It's great to have you here. And ladies, we're talking about turning your pain to power. Uh, leave a comment in the box below, contribute and ask questions. Harifa is here and she's ready to work with you. She's working with a lot of women uh, from all over the world. And welcome, Tabby. It's great to have you. Thank you so much. Oh, this is this is interesting. Uh, someone just posted a, a link to my book. I thank you. That's the civilized leader. I really appreciate you for doing that, Tabby. Thank you so much. I feel so honored that you had to do that. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you so much. So we're just going to continue with the conversation, uh, Harry, for some of the struggles. And hello, Imoli, David, thank you for being here. A lot of the struggles that women face is not, you know, an issue with self-worth, self-esteem, confidence. And sometimes we've gone through things in our past. We all have a story. Absolutely. But we struggle. We struggle with talking about what we've been through. Now, can you share with us how were you able to begin to talk about it? Because I'm sure that it wasn't always the same from the beginning. Um, how did you get to a point where you were comfortable 
We're talking about what you're doing and really take it upon yourself and be responsible for using that to empower other girls. Over to you, Harifa. Um, I remember years ago, I, I became a shadow of myself. Mm. I refused to speak, to speak out or to tell any, anybody what I'm going through. So I pretended to be happy. I wore this mask everywhere. I go, oh my God, you're so pretty. I just accept, okay, fine. But they didn't know the pain I was mm. going through every single day. And I hated when people say you're beautiful. Oh, you're nice because nobody knew what I was going through, and mm -hmm. it was very hard because you say, If I speak up, what would people say? They'll think, Oh, she's weak, oh, she's this. So it came to a point that I, I went through a lot. I lost my five sisters, I lost my two brothers, I lost my mother and my father. So that was a time that I just closed up myself. I'm like, You know what? I'm done. I'm just going to be in my own. So I created my own world wow. where I, did, I refuse to, to be attached to people, where mm. I refuse to express how I feel. I just accepted mm. everything that is going on. I just, mm. I was just mute, you know? And then it went into, I, I, I used to refuse to say I was depressed. I said, no, I'm. I'm not depressed because I don't know what is depression. People talk about it. I'm just going through a moment. I'm just trying to re to find out what went wrong from mm. a family of 12. And then I lost all my best friends, which are my sisters, five sisters and my mother. So I become so empty, very empty. And when people are talking all oh, this, I just, I just didn't care anymore. What is the reason of living when I lost it all? So, but then what, what motivated me is my children. When I look at my children, I said, God has blessed me in a way of giving me the gift of my children. And then when I look at them, I'm like, you know what? You can do it. So my best friend was my laptop and my book. I keep on writing. Most of the times mm. when those dark clouds come around, I just write, I'll break down and write and write and write. And then I read again. So when I'm reading it, I see my feelings. I feel my feelings because when I'm writing, my emotions are not there because it's all over. Mm -hmm. I'm broken, I'm suffering, but nobody knows. The world does not know. So I remember I said, you know what? how do i heal i started writing on facebook and my english was very very bad my grammar was everywhere i write this and people they'll make some comment i didn't even care about it so i started writing how i healed myself is when people read what i'm writing i feel like oh my god maybe someone is going through what i'm going through maybe someone also is experiencing what i'm experiencing so from then gradually i started getting better started getting better and i remember the time one day i was just not myself i said god i can't do it anymore this is just too much and how do i come out of it and i remember vividly that day i sat down and i said it's up to me nobody knows what i'm going through I put up this beautiful smile on Facebook. Everybody said, everything is fine. She is pretty. Everything is good. But no one knows what I'm going through. If mm. I lay down and die today, nobody knows. People are going to ask questions. Why? She was a happy person, but I mm. wasn't happy. Until the day I say, you know what? I just started writing. I said, I'm going to write a book. I'm going to express my feelings. I'm going to talk about my experiences and how I dealt with them. So I started appreciating myself. And then I find out that I was going into wrong relationship because I was still broken. I was searching for what I don't know. I wanted love because I didn't mm. have love anymore because all the love I had is gone. My family, mm. my sisters, my mom is gone. So I, I was empty. I didn't have love. What is love? I didn't know. So I started looking for love and I was doing it in the wrong place. And I ended up finding love in wrong places because I didn't know what it was. 
So mm. I give so much of me and it scares people away. Do you understand? Because I want to have it. And then I wasn't mm. happy because sometimes too much of everything, people can kind of pull up and then I go back in my shell again. Oh, I don't know what to do. So I started searching what I don't have, what I don't even know. So I said to myself, girl, take time. Take time, get to know yourself. And then I started going to church. I started praying and I connected to God and God started wow. speaking, speaking to me. What I'm trying to say is the certain times you become a shadow of yourself, which I did. Mm. The mm. certain times you become so lonely, yet you have thousands of people around you. It came to a point that everybody, my social media, everybody, all of this, but I was empty and broken. My best mm. friend, my pillow. The pillow is the only place where I felt comfortable because I can cry and the pillow will comfort me. But the world is like, oh, she's happy. Oh my God, she's this. No one knew what I was going through until I started. I said, you know what? I'm going to give back to this. And I did. Mm. I wrote it. I said, I'm going to share a little bit of my experience. Maybe someone else is going through the same. So mm. there it is. I started writing and sharing my experiences and how I dealt with it. But girl, it wasn't easy. It was a tough decision to make. I remember one day I was, I didn't know what to do anymore. And there's a lady in Ireland. I, I, I wrote three letters. Those letters I was, I wrote about how I feel. Mm. How broken I was, how I just want to take my life. I don't care anymore because there's nothing to live for. And I wrote everything and I sent it to three people. The, per the first person read and he just said, I'll call you back. The second person read, he didn't respond. The third person read, let it open. And I asked myself, oh my God, I want to die. And I'm sending a message to my three favorite people and they're not responding to me. Oh my God, maybe it's not time yet. Why should I die? And the next thing, if I die, what will people say? I just posted pictures and it's nice. There will be a lot of question mark. I wait until they respond. I waited and waited and nobody responded and I went to bed. And the other lady sent me a message. She said, are you okay? I said, I don't know how I feel. And she came to the house. She sat down on my, uh, across my table and she said to me, how do you feel? This is the first time in my life since I was born, someone asked me how you feel. Because everybody thinks I'm okay. Everyone thinks I'm strong because what I share on the social media, how I carry myself outside, nobody knew because I refused to speak up until the day I said, I'm done. I'm tired. I can't do it anymore. I am a shadow of myself. I see darkness. I can't see anything. There's nothing to live anymore. I didn't want to do anything. I just wanted to stay in my home. And that even affected me, the relationship with people. I, I withdraw from everybody. And then she sat down. She asked me, Harifa, what is the problem? I said, I don't know. And I just broke down and I started crying. And she took some, she was just listening. And I talked about how I feel. And the next thing she said, take a paper and write it down. And I wrote down everything that bothers me. He said, that's your goal. Do it. Follow that. Forget about your struggles. Forget about what you're going through, but follow that. And that's the day I was born again. I speak up. I speak to someone. I talk to someone how I feel. Every one of us, we are going through things. I don't like to say troubles because troubles doesn't exist in my world. I call it life training. Everybody's going through life training. What matters most is how you deal with it. Do you want to share it? I did mine. I was broken, I was in pieces. 
But now I picked myself up and nothing in this world can break me anymore because I've been broken, I mended myself, and I was broken again, I still mend myself. Now I'm standing strong, nothing can break me. So I encourage everyone out there, whatever it is you're going through, your marriages, talk about it, speak up. Relationship, talk about it. Even if you abused when you were young, talk about it, don't keep it. When you keep it, you will never ever set yourself free there'll be still something at the back of your mind that will always tell you you're not good enough, you're not worth it, you're useless, unless you speak up and carry yourself back. This is me. Wow, that, that was such a powerful story. And thank you so much for sharing. You are such an inspiration. Uh, just one second, let me go back to the audience. I have BC, welcome. Uh, Matilda, welcome. Um, I have, um, there's so many people, oh my goodness. Um, if I do not call your name, just know that I still care about you. I have Trina Brown, thank you for being here. I have Phoebe. Thank you for being here. Connex, thank you so much for being here. Alex, thank you for being here. Helen Alawu, thank you for being here. Monique, thank you for being here. Masir, I can see you. Melissa Rollins, thank you. Terence, uh, Ricky, Mirella, Ita, Kate, thank you. Uh, Ceci Dete, uh, Cindy Ann, Imali David, Thank you so much for being here. It, it is so great. Uh, Grace Garrett, it's great to have you. Thea, thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Eddie. Thank you, Vince, Abby, Aneta, uh, Fazal. It's great to have you here. Courtney, it's great to have you here. And so we have a lot of comments, oh my goodness, uh, from different screens. And we just had one from Cindy Ann. It's great to have you here. Is it standing strong, communicating your feelings? Beautiful, such an inspiration. Uh, that means so much to me. Thank you so much, Cindy Ann, for being here. Uh, that's one of our image masters. Uh, it's so great to have you here. Thank you so much. So my AICI family is here. Uh, John Maxwell family is here. Um, so really the experts are here. Um, everyone is here. I Change Nations are here. I am so excited. Uh, uh, it's a full house today. Guys, if you're just joining us for the very first time, the conversation today is turning your pain to power. And we have the best person in the house, Harifa Darley, who has been sharing so much about her. And Harifa, thank you. You're such a an inspiration oh my goodness i feel chills all over me that you had to go through all of that and still wake up to be so beautiful and gorgeous and elegant and empowering women all over the world i, I have a lot of work to do to myself um, well thank you i'm so honored to be to be serving with you and women this is the conversation for today we all have a story Listen, anything that you're going through, somebody else is probably going through something that's worse than that. It is time for us to get up and own our stories. If you're going through pain, like Harifa has just said, try to put it down. Your first best friend should be your journal. Put it down, write it down. Try to talk to someone because sometimes you might try to reach out to someone and no one is responding, just like she went through that. No one is responding. And we don't want you to get depressed. We don't want you to do something crazy to yourself. Put it down, write it down. Write down your story. Um, we have Harifa's story nicely put in a book. And I'm going to talk about that book in a minute. Uh, Harifa has a best-selling book, The Life Menu, which is in the hands of so many um, head of states, so many ministers all over the world have got a copy of this book. Her story is so inspirational. If you haven't gotten a copy of this book yet, um, I hope that someone can put a um, the link to this book from Amazon. We have it on Amazon. Someone can put the link to this book right in the session. 
right here, just put it in the comment box below because I want you to be able to grab a copy and read this book. I mean, I was going through this book and I had chills all over me. And I'm thinking, how did she do this? If she did this, then I can do it. And this is the conversation we're having for International Women's Day. We must be ready to hold each other's hands. Guys, if somebody reaches out to you, sends a message, they are probably at the verge of taking their lives. You have to respond. Don't do it when it's convenient. Welcome, Monique. It's great to have you here. You have to respond. We have to be our sister's keeper. Welcome, Daniel. It's great to have you here. Welcome, Izzy. I can see that so many countries are represented in, in this broadcast. It's a global um, audience right now. And I want us to be able to hold our hands together. If we do not love ourselves, nobody's going to love us. If you've gone through something, it's because I think that you went through it because God honors you to give you that story. Now, I don't know if you're on this platform and you're not talking about God. That's okay. Whatever that you are talking about, whatever that you're connected with, honors you to give that to you so that you can use that to impact and inspire other people's lives. We have to learn how to lift each other up. Welcome, Sam. It's great to have you in the house. Okay, so we need our, we need each other. We have Grace and Yera right here in the house who is running an initiative uh, for depressed and uh, societal uh, um, victims. And you see, there's so much happening in the world. This is the conversation that we've been having. If you're joining us for the very first time, you would have this video and other videos on my page. Uh, so try to follow me on So Unique Experts. I'm on Instagram as well on So Unique Experts, and you will have access to these videos. If you have a great story that can impact someone, that can inspire other people, send me an email. It's Louisa at the civilityacademy.com. We want to hear your story. We want to feature you here uh, just to be able to talk about what you're doing. And, you know, I, I've been seeing Harifa and the work that she's doing in Ireland, and she's doing so much great work with women and young girls. And I mean, I feel so honored, Harifa, that you had to come on the show. Even at this time of the night, you made our time to be here with us just to share this part of you. And so this leads me to the next question for you, Harifa. We have a lot of women here on this session. We have hundreds of people right now who are live from different parts of the world. What are you going to say to that woman who is struggling with her past, who is struggling with what she's going through? Who feels that she wants to give up? Who feels that she's good for nothing? Who feels that there is no more hope? What are you going to say to that woman? How can you encourage that woman? Um, over to you, Harifa. First of all, if there's a woman out there who's thinking that, you know what? I'm not good enough. I'm not beautiful. I want you to understand that first, God has created you so special very unique. You see, each and every one of us, we are special in our own way. And don't look at yourself thinking, oh, my life is over. Your life is not over. Your life is just starting. You alone, you're the key to your inner spirit, to your own self. God has given you the authority to change your mm -hmm. life. God has given you the authority to make things happen. One mm. of the mistakes we make is we depend on people. I want you to understand me clear. Do not ever depend on anyone because you alone, you have that authority in your hand to make things happen. I'll tell you a little thing. When I was going through a lot, most of my friends were not there. And when I'm going through difficult times, friends are not there. Me, friends, family, everybody, you alone. I was all by myself. I was surrounded with four corners of my house. Mm. Mm. The only person I would speak to is God. I would say, God, let your will be done upon my life. I can't do it anymore. I remember when, I, I, I don't like to say it, it was a dream. 
God has visited me twice in my life and I'm a very stubborn human being. I'm like, oh, I don't want to go to church. I don't want to be a born again. I don't want, I love God. I love, but I can't. And it comes to a point that no matter what you are doing will not make sense anymore. It mm. comes to a point that the people you trust, they betray you. It will come to a point that your own self, you betray your own self. You can't trust yourself anymore because your mind will start playing with you. Do this, do this, this is good. This, you don't even know yourself. You become empty and lonely. What do you do? You pick yourself up. Every morning, look yourself on the mirror and bless yourself. Appreciate yourself. That's what I do. When things are so hard, I, I'll wake up, I'll dress up. I am a person. You will never see me walking around, not even looking, dressing up. I, I wake up every morning, sometimes five o'clock. I wake up, I'll take an hour just to bless myself, to pray and maybe take my pain and write things. And six o'clock, I'll wake up sometimes and cook and sometimes just to do something. But there's one thing I always tell myself, girl, you are strong. You are beautiful. You can make it. You can do it. I want you to be your own keeper. Remember, mm. who alone knows what you're going through. Mm. Unless you speak up, someone will be there. And remember, the way you say your story, you may entertain other people and you will not even get help or you may get help. So there's no, there's no 100% that if you talk about your story and you get help. You may or you may not. You may be mocked or you may get help. The only thing that matters is you. What do you want? How do you want your life to be? How are you going to change your situation to a better place? When you look at people on social media, it doesn't mean that everything is all right. I was on social media all the time and people love my pictures. People love comments and all that. Did anyone know that I was broken? No. Did anyone know I was full of tears? Nobody knows. The only thing they see is a pretty smile. But behind that pretty smile, there were broken pieces. But I made a decision. I took a chance and made myself and speak up and not to be afraid of anything. As I am today, I am so free in a way that I can love because I understand love. I am one human being that love. I love myself so much in a way that people that don't understand love, they find me very intimidating. But I don't blame them <laughs> because I know how hard it took me to be where I am today. I know how hard it took me to realize what is love. I struggled so much. I end up in hands of people that have abused me. I've end up in hands of friends, even a friend to an extent that abusing me so much. And even, oh, I let, you see in this life, I don't know, but you have that thing in you. You earn, your life is in your hands, not anybody. I've been betrayed with my, my best friend, my people that I eat with. Not because they didn't love me, but because they didn't know themselves. Because if you know yourself, you can never bring another sister down. You can never betray anybody. If you don't know yourself, that's why you end up betraying other people. You end up envying other people. So the message to a sister, if you are going through something, you have to pick yourself up. You have mm. to trust yourself. You have to speak to God, say, God, let your will be done upon my life. Because sometimes we mm. fail to pray. Mm. We don't know how to pray. But when you say, God, take a will, God, just bless me. God, help mm. me. Save me. Mm. Set me free. Trust me. You will be set mm. free. Because God listens. He just wants you to speak. He just wants you to say, I am ready. Mm. Mm. Because all of us, we have time. 
God let me to do anything I want to do. I was very mm -hmm. stubborn. I'm a very, very stubborn person. Anything I want, I get it. I was that type of a person. I said, oh my God, I want to watch TV. I'll see all the Nollywood. I'll see all the stars. I'm like, God, I want to know them. I want to know that. Do you know what God did? He made it so easy. I didn't struggle to know any, uh, any star. They found me. Very easy. And then when I enter, I see how they live. He said, God asked me, is that what you want? I'm like, oh, it's too hard for me. It's not the life I want. I move out. I'm like, oh my God, I see all these politicians, so much, they're living high and all that. God said, okay. And I meet big politicians, I meet people, I meet everybody. And then I see the life. God said, is this what you want? I said, mm -hmm, not yet. So every single thing we wish for, we mm -hmm. ask, God will let us have it. But the question is, are you ready? Can you handle it? So I always tell people, be very careful with your prayer points. When you're praying, make sure of it. Is it what you want? And then in that way, you'll be able to understand yourself. And one big thing is stop trying to look for something from other people. Stop trying to find love from other people. You have to discover that love within yourself. If you mm -hmm. understand what is love, you'll be able to love other people. You'll be able to respect yourself and respect other people. And it's not everything that you hear you should talk about. It's not everything that you hear fighting this one, say this, you should fight about it. What you need is just pick yourself up, love yourself, protect yourself, keep your circle small, trust God. That's it. Thank you so much, Harry. Fire. You could have said it better. Um, I have some contributions from the audience. Uh, Cindy Ann says, amazing. You are so precious. And we have Kate from Nigeria say, God bless you, Harry, for you are a blessing. Uh, thank you so much, Kate. It's so good to have you here. Guys, if you are just joining us uh, for the first time, and welcome, Jennifer Harris. It's great to have you in the house. Uh, welcome. This is the Civilized Presence. Usually we're here every Mondays and Fridays at 8 a.m., but we do have some special days like today. Uh, today is the International Women's Day, so all of the women, hoo -hoo, um, you know, I'm so excited that we're celebrating one another, and we had to bring some precious leaders like Harifa. Uh, we had uh, Christine in the morning uh, sharing with us their story and how they've been able to turn that pain to the power to be able to empower and inspire and impact other people. So I want to encourage you to do the same thing. Your story is there for a reason. Your voice is there for a reason. You don't have to be perfect. I never heard, uh, Harifa never said she was perfect. She wasn't. She woke up from where she was and made a decision to find love from within first. And then the minute that you find love from within, you are going to attract love from the outside. But if you try to attract love from the outside first, you will continue to be empty. Absolutely. So go back inside of you and find that diamond that is inside of you that only you bring. What is that unique gift? What is that unique talent? What is that unique uh, purpose? What is that thing that God has given to you alone that only you can do? What makes you different? What makes you unique? What is that story that you have that you've been hurting it? You don't want to talk about it. It's getting you depressed. It's getting you troubled. You are sad. It's the International Women's Day. It's time for us to be able to own our story. It's time for us to be able to embrace who we are. Find who you are. It's time for you to discover yourself, your identity. What do you stand for? Begin to, to work on the brand called you. Yes, Cindy Ann says, know yourself to grow yourself. That's correct. Uh, Cindy Ann is, a, is an image master and a civility expert. It's so great to have you here. Thank you so much. Thank you. These are people that I look up to. So thank you so much for being here. So it's important that we find ourselves. It's important that we find our voice and use that voice 
to inspire people. So my question for you would be today, what are you using your voice for? What are you doing to make the world a better place? All of us are expecting to see changes in the world, but that change will have to begin with you. That change is not gonna drop from anywhere else. That change has to begin with you. What are you doing in your community? What are you doing with the people around you who are struggling? And that's why civility is all about being responsible for your actions, okay? Just being responsible and consciously trying to ease the experience of the person next to you. Look around you, who is going through something? Who is not happy? Did you see, did you notice something different about them, their character or something strange is happening about them? Try to talk to them, try to begin a conversation and thank you so much for all of you who have shared this. Grace and Gary, I really appreciate you, sister, for sharing this on different platforms. Um, Ella, thank you so much for starting the watch party. Um, Morel, thank you for starting the watch party. And I can see that a lot more other people shared. If I haven't mentioned your name, I just want to let you know that I love you very much and I really appreciate you making out time to be here. And Daniel, thank you so much for being here and sharing this message. Thank you. So guys, we are almost at the end of the session, but I'm not going to stop this without asking Harifa about some of the awards that she's received uh, because she's gotten some international awards. So Harifa, can you tell us a little bit about these awards? Uh, over to you, Harifa. Oh, thank you very much. Um, I got three awards. Uh, one is from Sunrise Foundation. I got International um, Motivational Speaker of the Year. And uh, I got volunteer of the year. That's my favorite because I volunteer a lot. I uh, I give a lot to to the community. And um, that was my best one because um, I, I want to say something to people that most of the times a lot of people have talent, but because they are waiting to look for a job to get paid, and their talent is just wasted. Because they said, you know what? I can't do things for free. No, I can't work for free. Let me tell you something. I started the media in Ireland and nobody could employ me. You know what I did? I started my own. I give my service for free. I am always up, like anybody who's doing anything. I'm like, you know what? I can offer, I can do your videos. I can do this. I go and volunteer everywhere. Anything someone is doing, I'm there. I'm giving, giving, because I believe when you give, when you, when you bring your talent out there, someone will notice you. So if you are good at something, don't just sit down and waiting, oh, I'm looking for a job. I can't do it for free. Girl, start doing it for free. Give an hour. Someone will notice you. And I got an excellent award from Nigeria, uh, from um, a, a, I, I I'm sorry, I tried to, to pronounce his name, it's a booker. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it was an excellent award. I went to Nigeria, I gave a speech, and he's a very good person. They have their own published company there as well. They're the people that helped me to publish my book. Mm. And yeah, so that is it. And uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you so much and welcome, Alisa, it's great to have you. Stacy Anderson, it's great to have you here. So if you're just joining us, the conversation has been turning your pain into power. It's the International Women's Day today and we're celebrating women from all over the world. So we have Harifa Daly from Ireland and she's here and she, she shared her story with us. So if you're just joining us, you have access to this video on replay. So watch it and share Share this video with as much people as you can. Um, you can start a watch party on your page and just do it. Together we can do it. Yeah. And like Harifa just said, do not wait to get noticed. Get out no. there and volunteer no. your time. Volunteer your resources, volunteer your talent. And that's how people get to know how good you are and learn about what you do. 
So Harifa, thank you so much. Thank you guys. We are almost at the end of the session. And I want to talk to us about some of the trainings that we have that's coming up. And thank you so much for some of you who have sent me emails. I received a lot of emails today and messages. Thank you so much. Yes, we do have trainings coming up. We have certifications programs that are coming. Uh, some of you are asking, Louisa, how can we do what you do? And I'm excited to share this knowledge with you. So I'm going to be uh, posting in the coming weeks some of the information of how you can get certified here in Virginia, in Dubai, um, in Africa. We're bringing it to Africa this time. So I'll talk to you about that um, next week. We also do have a free class. Welcome, Dr. Linda Lara. It's great to have you here. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Happy International Women's Day. It's great to see you. So we do have a mastermind that's coming up next week. And I'm going to post a flyer about that between today and tomorrow. And I want you to be part of all of the work that we're doing. Now, if you haven't um, yet gone to look for uh, Harifa's book, we posted the link here. And Harifa is on social media. If you want to learn more about what she does, it's Harifa Derley. Or you can send me an email, louisa at the civilityacademy.com if you want to be able to work with her or just be part of what she's doing in different parts of the world. Uh, let, let us know. Now, if you want to become a civility ambassador, listen, I cannot do this work alone. We need more hands. We need more change makers. Send me an email as soon as you can. You need to run and send me an email. It's louisa at the civilityacademy.com. And tell us what you're interested in doing. Let us have a conversation and just kind of work with you and seeing how you can be an ambassador in your own country or wherever that you find yourself because we have audience from all parts of the world. Um, and I think that we should be able to work together. So thank you so much, guys. It was so great to have all of you here to the end of the session. And um, some of you have been here from the very beginning. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you. And I'm looking forward to see you again on Monday morning at 8 a.m. Eastern time. So I wanna say bye for now. And oh, I still have people coming on. Catalina, it's great to have you here. Thank you. Thank you, Lista. It's great to have you here. Thank you, Susan. It's great to have you here. Thank you, Charles. It's great to have you here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If I haven't mentioned your name, we've come to the end of the session. But I appreciate you. I love you. Um, I might not get a chance to send you a message, but I love you. And I hope that you're doing some work in your community. Let us know what you're doing. Let us know. Uh, we are about to uh, get things started in Romania with uh, Catalina. I'm so excited that she's back here again. So thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. I'll see you again on Monday morning at 8 a.m. Eastern time. And Harry, friend, to you, I want to say a big thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you for being here. Thank you for the work that you do. Thank you for using your story to impact the world. You're such an amazing lady. Thank you. You're such an inspiration. Um, I think everyone that has been in this session will at least go back to think through the weekend. What can you do with your life? How can you make the world a better place? Thank you so much. Yes. I really appreciate for having me here as well. And I, I want to tell every woman there, be inspired by your own strength and be inspired by your own image. Remember, don't look on your right, on the left, who's talking about you. Be your own leader and make sure you, if you discover yourself, make sure you share your love, your kindness outside. Don't look for what you don't understand and always understand before you look what you're looking for. Remember, you have the authority upon your life use it wisely thank you very much once again my name is harifa Deli. thank you thank you it was so great to be with you and we hope that we're going to see you again and again in the session in the future thank you and have yourself a good night thank bye you. for now bye